In this lesson, we are going to improve our form so that we add some validations. So let's go directly into our code. And what I'm going to do is um, I will replace these help blocks that are just repeating what I should type in the input text, but we're going to use those to display any validation message to our user. So first of all, we have already a required field and out of the box, Angular is attaching the required validation to this field. So let's add a message for the user in case the field is empty. And to do so, we're going to use a directive which is named ng-show. What this directive does is basically applying a CSS class to hide the element if the condition is not evaluated to true. So whatever is the expression we'll type in, the element will be displayed only if the condition is true. And in the same way, we can do the opposite thing, which is the NGI directive. So the element in that case will be hidden if the condition is true. Okay. So inside our ng show, what we want to type, well, first of all, we need to check if the user had at least one interaction with the form, otherwise the message would be displayed immediately, unless this is what you want. So we'll do something like had event form dot dollar dirty. And, and we use the double end. And we'll check if our field is invalid. So we'll, we'll type had event form dot event name dot dollar invalid. And that should do the trick. So let's double check what happens. Nothing has been displayed right now, but if I type something in any of the fields, boom, the event name. So well, let's change the message to something more uh, valuable to the user. So that would be, please enter the event, event name. Let's do that again, and okay, we need to enter the event name, so I'll try to enter wonderful angular angular event. And as you can see, as soon as I type, the validation disappears because it's no longer required, and if I remove the text from my field, the validation comes back again, the message to the user comes back again. Well, we're going to improve this message a little in terms of colors. We'll see how to do that later, but not now. Another thing we want to do, we want to set a minimum length and a maximum length for this field. Let's do that immediately. And the way we're gonna do it is thanks to two new directives, which are ng min length, which takes as an input a number. So in our case, it will be three. And ng max length, they were going to set to 50 which is our higher limit, right? So back to our nice, we can get rid of the inspector, back to our add event as usual. So if I start typing a single character, you see that it will say, please enter the event name. The second character will keep the validation, the third one will remove it because the minimum length has been uh, reached. I'm excited to see what will happen if I keep typing more than 50 charters, let's see immediately, and boom, the validation comes back again. Well, let's change the validation error to be more um, immediate to the user, and let's put something, please enter an event name between 3 and 50 charters. Okay, so, and that might do the trick. We can now move to the other fields. We can keep this required and in the same way that we did on for the event name, we can copy the ng show. And we can put add event form instead of event name, it will be event description. Totally invalid. Please enter an event description and so on. Let's look now at the date field and well, we have already defined two validations. We have a minimum date of 4th of January 2015 and the maximum date to be the 30th of January 2015, which is very good. 
So basically we can do the same thing again and we can type event description, sorry, <laughs> event date invalid. So I'm expecting that this message, the event date is not within the required range. This message will display whenever uh, the user tries to input manually a date which is not between the time range. But what if I want to change this validation, allow the user to enter any date, but I just want to verify that the date the user entered is in the correct format. If you remember, the date field is not supported in every browser, so in some browsers the user might have to input the date uh, manually. Well, we'll see how to do that in the next lesson.